I would imagine um, that it it solves it it serves several um, purposes. One will be the relationship between the two of them. Um, we had uh, the defence minister Shoigu going there, and obviously talking about weapon supplies. But what I think North Korea wants is something in exchange for that. Um, obviously, it would like real high tech. Uh, missile technology, etc. Um, it may also want a show of strength with Russia, such as military exercises, naval exercises, and so on. That may be part of the discussions. Um, what's, I think, very interesting from the perspective of um, the Russia's war against Ukraine is that Russia clearly is um, needing to offer something to North Korea um, to get ammunition. It's not just straightforward, just purchase. And I would say as well that what we have seen too is that they're not getting what they need from China, which I think is very interesting. So, you know, North Korean ammunition won't be of the highest quality. It was promised before, but it hasn't, not, not much has actually got through, it seems to Russian front lines, is from what I've been able to ascertain. So, um, you know, this is um, clearly Russia running short of our ammunition right now and having to go to North Korea. There are very few countries that they can go to to get this type of ammunition. So China has uh, so far not provided actual weapons. It's provided dual-use technology, um, but it hasn't actually provided direct weapons assistance to Russia. And I think that's to do with China's own foreign policy, in which China wants uh, to be clear that what it's looking for is peace, uh, it's criticised the West from, for arming Ukraine, and therefore it doesn't want to directly arm Russia as yet. Um, that may change, of course, if things go on further. Um, but that's uh, China is in the um, enviable position, I suppose, in its relationship with Russia, where, it's hold, where it holds many more cards um, than, than, than Russia does. Um, and indeed, Russia, um, if it wants Chinese weapons, may have to uh, really... Uh, spend a lot in terms of its future strategic direction, such as land, such as you know safe harbors in the Arctic, some of which are already ongoing. Um, and then essentially Russia runs the risk in the longer run of becoming a client state of China, which is, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Putin is very aware of that and is, is quite concerned. It won't be an immediate impact. It will be longer term. I mean, getting um, ammunition, short range, anti-tank missiles to, um, to to Russia will take time. Um, it depends, I think, as well on what was agreed with Shoigu before and whether or not they've actually been preparing in advance of this. Uh, and that um, I don't think we've heard of yet. Um, but it won't be straight away, certainly. And of course, you know, we're coming up now to the autumn um, in which you know, because of weather conditions, uh, ground conditions, uh, fighting um, will probably die down um, on the ground quite a bit, particularly as you come up to the winter. So this this next few weeks period, this next month of sort of September through to mid-October, will be a critical um, uh, month and a half for the counteroffensive and for uh, Russia trying to hold its lines, which it, it seems to be unable to do in certain parts, particularly in the South. So this may have come too late for Russia.